Oh, look at that one. Oh, look at that one. Oh, that one's so cute. Oh, look at the little kitten. Oh, hi. Good to see you there. I guess you all already know who I am. I'm Victor from 9E, and I'm here to present about the fantastic classic novel Fahrenheit 451. So why are we wasting time? Let's get going! The book was written by a guy called Ray Bradbury. He was born on August 22nd in a town called Waukegan in Illinois. He died June 5th, 2012, which was just less than a year ago. Now, he looked like this. He might not have been a handsome fella, but he r wrote a really good book, which I'm going to talk about to you more about today. Ray Bradbury had a Swedish mother who had immigrated to the US. His father was of English descent, and he got to grow up in a town called Waukegan in Illinois, as I stated previously. Many of his books have been inspired by his hometown, and he has switched the name of it to, for example, Greentown, Illinois. The Bradbury family later moved to Texas six years after Ray Bradbury's birth. They moved there because his father was looking for a job, and they had, hadn't found a stable job. Throughout his youth, Ray Bradbury liked to write a lot, and one of his most influential inspirations was Edgar Allan Poe, and he tried to imitate a lot of his writing all throughout his youth. The Bradbury family moved to California, Los Angeles, in eight years later, in 1932. This Los Angeles is also where he, where Ray Bradbury died, year 2012. Now though, back to the novel. Fahrenheit 451 is a classic novel written by Ray Bradbury. It is set in a futuristic society where books are now illegal and to uphold this legislation, firemen have been employed to get rid of them. There is one key difference though. Firemen don't stop fires, they start them. If they find a book in a house, they set fire to the house. People have been brainwashed to think that, they, uh, that it has always been like this, that firemen have always burnt houses. The book is set a couple of hundred years into the future, but at the same past as we do although it has been warped to for the citizens. But more on that later. We get to follow the main character, Guy Montauk, a fireman. He's married to his wife, Mildred, and they live in what's so, a so-called parlor. I guess it's an apartment, but I am not sure since they never mentioned the true meaning of it in the book. But anyways, one day when leaving work, Guy, the main character, is met by a person he has never met before, Clarice Mac McClellan. She asks him the question, are you happy? What happens later on in the book is heavily dependent on this question. The book is very focused on censorship and control. We are introduced to a world where books are illegal and they have repla been replaced by other mass media, such as TV. The world is supposed to be a utopia, but for some people like Guy, it isn't. There's something missing. Everyone is supposed to be cut off from all that is bad in the world by having made books illegal. Everyone is meant to be happy at all times due to this. The books is basically what they say, they are saying that the books are basically the root of all problems in the story. The thought behind it all is that people shouldn't have to think for themselves. Because when people think for themselves, they get angry, they get mad, they get frustrated. So by taking away books and other media that makes you think, you are supposed to be happy. But Guy, he is not happy. This isn't working out for him. There is something missing, and he doesn't know why. He came to the realization that he was unhappy when Clarice asked him. He is conforming to all the, the, all the standards of society, like not going out at night, taking long walks, thinking about your problems. But 
he's still unhappy. Because if you go out for long walks, you are weird. Or if you just have to try to sit down and have a conversation, you are weird. So this is what society has turned into. The television has taken a major part in everyone's lives. It has turned into a device that tells people what to do and uh, what to think. For example, the country in this book is on the brink of war and its inhabitants are constantly told that the world will be quick and be over in less than 10 days because the enemy's forces are so weak. But uh, I feel this is a reference to how peop much people have forgotten their past actually since, for example, during the 1920s and 1930s when World War One was taking place, people were thinking that the war would be quick. It would be over in 30 days or less. But now, people have seemed to have forgotten that and forgotten how painful war really is. And as this book is set in the future, people are, aren't, don't know about the powers of, for example, nuclear bombs and what they do to you and everything they touch, practically. As I said, the book focuses a lot on the dangers of censorship and what could happen if cert when certain things are such as simple as books are outlawed. It doesn't just focus on censorship though. A rather major part of it is how TV and mass media affect us, how they can control us. Most importantly, it threads on the dangers that arise when people stop thinking for themselves. People need to have the dif their different opinions and that's what this book is all about. Personally, I, I found Fahrenheit 451 interesting. While it wasn't the be one of the best books I've read, it was certainly one of the most, if not the most, interesting. It got me thinking and involved, which is what books are supposed to do, according to this book. And that's what's dangerous about them, right? I'm just kidding. But the main question running through my mind is, how could all of this happen? How did it get to this? Even though I found it difficult at times, to understand the language of the book and the context it was written in, even though the book is just six years old, I found it to be a really, really beautiful book. I did find it very beautifully written because of the many vivid descriptions you get, and uh, a, the language just has a lot of life to it. It really caught you and you just wanted to keep reading it. I would recommend this book. It might not be the best book in the world, but it should open your eyes. We follow the life of a fireman called Guy Montag. He works as a fireman at the local fire station and one day after work he meets a girl named Clarice. She's a bit peculiar because she doesn't do the things people normally do. She likes to go on long walks outside and such. This has become frowned upon in the futuristic society. <coughs> when he gets home to his wife, she has taken an overdose of sleeping pills. And so he calls for an ambulance which comes and replaces her bloodstream and everything and cleans out her stomach. Later when she wakes up, she, de uh, she denies all of this, saying that she just had a bit too much to drink and such. This Montag, Guy Montag, obvi obviously knows he's lying and that there's something wrong with her. Constantly, Guy gets more and more unhappy. When he's on a job, for example, uh, later when he goes on a job to burn a house, they encounter a woman with an entire library full of books. When they go to burn these books with the kerosene, she, she decides to die with them. So we really see that she has, she has a really strong attachment to them. Guy decides that there must be something magical to the books for someone to want to die for them. He later catches a glimpse of a line in a book and decides to bring it, the book home. This is where the trouble starts. One day, the day after he burnt the woman's house down, she, he calls in sick and uh, later that day his boss comes to visit him to check if he is alright. Uh, they sit in their bedroom and talk and, uh, mm, and uh, Mildred reaches under M Guy's pillow and she feels the book there. She doesn't say anything but Guy's boss obviously knows something is up. Uh, he doesn't act though, but sends a mechanical hound, which is made to track books. He sends it around their apartment, or 
uh, apartment or the so-called uh, parlors later. A guy later remembers a guy named Faber. He worked at a university and now he's in hiding. He had been suspected of having books previously. He meets up with him to help him out with, with what to do with the books. Faber is unwilling at f first to help him, but after Guy gets out a copy of the New Testament, which has become very rare, and starts ripping out pages up from it, Faber finally gives in to the pressure and decides to help him. He gives Guy a device which he puts in his ear, which allows him to talk to Guy at all times. He then sends him home. At home, his wife has friends over. Guy, for some reason, gets out a book in frustration and starts reading from it. After his wife's friends have been shocked, he tries to shake it off by saying that all firemen get to bring a book home because just to show how stupid they are. But he wasn't. He didn't really want to say this because. Uh, but Faber was talking to him in his ear and persuading him into doing it. So because he didn't want him to get busted of having books. His wife's friends are disgusted and go home. The next day, Guy goes into work as usual. Halfway through the day, they receive an alarm of someone having books at home. They get into the fire truck and start racing toward, down the street towards the house. But when they later get off, Guy notices that it's his house that has been reported. He sees his wife running down the stairs and getting into a cab, presumably because he's so ashamed because she had turned him in along with her friends. Now, he went along with burning his house down, but after his boss noticed that he had the little device for communicating with Faber in his ear, he, his boss asked him to turn it over so they could trace whoever was in his ear talking to him. Guy refused to go along with this, so he actually took the fire hose and killed his boss with it. He later knocked the other two who witnessed it unconscious and fled the scene. But while fleeing, a mechanical hound bit, actually bit his leg, so he was paralyzed in it for quite some time. He runs away from his house and the police, not knowing what happened to his wife. He runs to Faber's house and uh, leaves when the poison in the leg has worn off. He regains his ability to use his leg shortly and manages to destroy the hound. During all of this, war has been declared and uh, the country has mobilized the troops. While escaping, Fab uh, Guy f escapes across a river and uh, he managed to escape another mechanical hound that was out to kill him. He escapes across the river and found, finds a camp dedicated to exiled book lovers and he decides to stay with them. But then off in the distance, he sees this whole city going up in flames after a nuclear bomb has been dropped on it. Everyone was killed instantly in the city, along with his wife. But Faber managed to escape, and Guy, well, you know, he's alive, and he made it out. At the end, they mention how they need to build a mirror factory so humanity can take a good look at itself. And that's the synopsis of the plot. Finally, I'm going to talk a bit about the characters. Guy Montag is the main protagonist. He is a fireman who gets sucked up into the magical world of books. His work conflicts with his true beliefs, as he does not approve of, it, of what he does. On the other hand, he doesn't think for himself either. Faber. He previously worked as an English professor. Ever since books were outlawed, he spent his time regretting that he didn't do anything to stop this. He is very important to the story, as Guy, does, as Guy turns to him for guidance when he doesn't know what to do. Finally, I'm going to be talking about Clarice. Clarice was one month short of being 17. She was a peculiar person since she did not do what most people did. She was outgoing, intuitive and cheerful. She liked to focus on nature rather, rather than technology and was disliked among her teachers for asking why instead of how. She dies shortly after we are introduced to her by getting run over by a car. We do not find this out though until, late, until later in the novel.